Hi everyone, this is Deekshit. Welcome to my channel. In this particular video, I'll be talking about monitoring Kubernetes cluster with ELK stack. So this is the second video about uh, this monitoring Kubernetes uh, cluster with ELK stack. So in the first video, I've explained about uh, what are all the tools I'm gonna use in this setup. And also I've just given a brief about uh, all the tools that I'm gonna use in this particular uh, demo, okay? And so let's get into demo uh, quickly. So, so I'm already uh, my Kubernetes uh, master up and running. Okay, so let's check uh, any resources has been created or not. kubectl uh, get all. So all these things I'll be doing it in cube uh, iPhone system namespace. So, so I mean in cube iPhone namespace uh, iPhone system. So, so it is basically it will be having already a uh, Kubernetes related. Uh, uh, ports and services and daemon sets running so so that's the reason uh, it is showing up so if you want to see uh, which is the current uh, uh, namespace that i am working on so the command is kubectl and uh, con config so then you can give a view okay so this is how you can you'll be able to uh, see uh, your particular uh, namespace so you can see the namespace is cube system so to do this demo, so I have a couple of uh, YML files. Okay, so basically for each tool, I have taken one YML file in that uh, I have many uh, Kubernetes objects. Okay, so I'll just uh, go through all the fields that I've used in uh, my YML files. So so first, I'm gonna create uh, Elasticsearch deployment because this is uh, as a centralized uh, storage I'm using. So uh, when my file beat or metric beat or a log stash. So when I uh, deploy onto Kubernetes cluster, so it will search for a uh, search for elastic search. So that's the reason first I'll gonna create this one and then I'll gonna create um, log stash, Kibana and file read. At the end, I'll create a Kibana, okay? So this is the elastic search YML file. So basically I've used a service account. First I've created a service account. The API version is V1 and the kind is service account. So service account is basically for authentication authorization. So we will use a, a service account, and then I'm naming it as uh, Elastic uh, uh, Search iPhone Logging. And then now uh, the namespace that I'm gonna apply this service account is a uh, Cube iPhone System. So as I'm gonna create all these uh, deployments or uh, stateful sets on uh, Cube System namespace, right? So that's the reason I'm putting this service account onto that namespace. And these are all the basic um, uh, labels, okay? And then the next one is cluster role. So cluster role is basically a rule. You can say in layman uh, terms, so it is a rule. So what uh, resources you can access and what actions you can take on those resources, okay? So the kind is uh, cluster role and the API version I've used uh, rbac.authorization.kh.io uh, slash uh, v1 and I'm naming it uh, my uh, cluster role as Elasticsearch iPhone logging, and these are all the labels, okay? And the next one is rules. Uh, so I'm just specifying, so what API groups can be uh, accessed and what actions and what resources in that API groups uh, in this particular section. So I'm just taking the API groups. So if I give this double quotes, so what it does, uh, what does it mean is like all the core API groups are included here. So the uh, API groups in the sense like uh, for each and every Kubernetes object is related to some API version, right? Like uh, if you see uh, for uh, service account, it is V1. And if you see for the cluster role, it is RB, uh, AC, some authorization. And then if you see for the deployment, a stateful set uh, application, so that, that is app slash V1. And if you see for the service, it is V1. And uh, if you see for uh, ingress, so it is extension uh, slash V1 beta. So I am specifying, uh, so I want to use only core API groups. So that is basically uh, uh, apps v1, v1, and uh, these all uh, APIs will be included in this one. So that's the reason I'm just giving a double quotes. Under that API groups, I want to use these resources like services, namespace, and endpoints, okay? And the verbs will basically tell us what action. So in my case, it is only a get, so if you want to, or do any other actions like uh, list or something so then you need to specify it okay and the next one is now we have a service account which is basically used for authentication and authorization 
So now uh, I have created a uh, rule also, right? Which is basically a cluster rule. So I need to attach this rule with uh, my service account. So that's where my cluster role binding comes into picture. The so cluster role binding is a bridge between my uh, service account and a cluster role. So which adds a cluster role to my service account. As you can see, the, the kind is a cluster role binding and the API version. So this is RBAC authorization API version. And the name is uh, namespace is cube system because I'll be creating this in uh, cube system. I'm naming it as Elasticsearch hyphen logging. And these are the labels that I'm gonna use. And uh, then the subjects. So I need to tell, so on what my, I need to apply the rule. So it can be a, so a group of users, or it can be a single user, or it can be a service account. So in my case, it is service account. I'm specifying Elasticsearch a logging. Um, so if you see, when I create a service account, I've given a name. So the same name I've used here. And the labels, again, I'm defining. So, so Elasticsearch logging and uh, so th those things I am, I've already discussed, I guess. So, so this is the kind and uh, the name of the service account I'm giving, and I'm specifying the namespace also. So on what, uh, I mean, this service account has been created, and then I'm giving a role reference. So this is basically what role should be applied on this service account. So this is a role reference that I'm giving. So what role should be attached with service account? And the next one is, um, so as you can see, so API group has just specified uh, double quotes, right? So that means uh, already I have specified, uh, so this is all core API groups, right? So it, uh, I mean, this API version and this particular one will come under a core API groups. So you can just, if you want to be specific, then you can specify this uh, API versions directly here. So, I mean, if you want to generalize, then you can just give a double quotes. And then uh, the Elasticsearch deployment. So this is a year I'm using kind stateful set because um, so stateful set is uh, similar to uh, deployment itself, but a slight difference. So it can, uh, I mean, uh, so stateful set can uh, ro uh, do a roll update and a rolling update and it can maintain the pods as a deployment. But the uh, small difference is like, uh, it'll give a very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a sticky uh, identifier for a pod means like uh, when you create a, a pod using uh, deployment so you, as you can see so it adds up uh, uh, many things like uh, a random number or a, a random thing will be concatenated with your uh, pod name so when you create a stateful set uh, uh, i mean like it will be added with the index okay it will the index will start with zero so when we create this uh, particular stateful set now you'll get to know so i have two replica set right so it will create like this. So the pod name is basically elastic. Assume like elastic search hyphen logging, and then uh, it will attach a slash a zero and slash one. So when uh, let's say uh, that zero uh, pod has been uh, killed and it is restarted again, it will be given the same name. But in case of deployment, if you kill the pod, so then it will create a pod with a different name itself. Okay. So that is a, a slight difference. So which gives a very, uh, I mean, unique, I mean, identifier. So slight identification. Basically, when I create this one, you'll get to know. Okay. So then I'm just giving a metadata. So it is very similar to Kubernetes the configurations also. The namespace I'm giving cube system, and then uh, labels I'm specifying, and the service name. So service name I'm just specifying as uh, Elasticsearch hyphen logging and I need two replicas that's the reason because this is the storage for um, both my file beat and uh, metric beat right so that's the reason uh, I am just taking as uh, two replicas and uh, the update strategy is uh, rolling update so basically if you uh, don't mention also by default it is rolling update and then the selector so this is very important so here whatever the match labels under mass labels you give right so these labels should match with your uh, pod labels Okay, as you can see, so from here our uh, pod definition will start. So under the labels, I have this one. So the same thing should be there in uh, match labels under the deployment. Okay, and then uh, the pod definition starts. Uh, metadata and the labels have um, uh, declared. And the next one is uh, spec. Uh, so specifications of our pod. And again, I'm specifying the service account name. 
Elasticsearch iPhone logging. And if you see here, uh, my container parts will start. And uh, image I'm using official image, uh, Elasticsearch image. And then I'm naming it as uh, Elasticsearch iPhone logging. And the resources I'm giving it, like how much CPU of, uh, uh, to be used. And then I'm specifying the ports. So two ports, one is for like accepting the data and one is for sending the data. Okay. And the next one is volume mount. So basically, so when you uh, deploy any uh, Kubernetes objects uh, onto your, your Kubernetes uh, cluster, so not uh, any object. So when you deploy a deployment, so what it happens, so first, so let assume, uh, so let me clear this one first. So this is assume this is the uh, deployment, okay. First, what it will do is it will create a deployment uh, config map, not the config map, uh, volumes. Okay, so then uh, it will create a, a, a pods basically. Okay, so what it will do, so whatever you have uh, there in the volumes, if you want to copy uh, to your pod, so what you need to do is you need to specify the volume mounts. So volume mounts is a bridge between your volumes and also a pod. Okay, so when you specify that, so this volume will be mapped to a particular folder in the pod. So whatever there in this one will be transferred here and whatever there in the pod will be transferred to this volume. Okay, so this is how I um, mean volume mount uh, we need to uh, uh, actually works. Okay, and then uh, so whatever there in uh, this uh, volume will be copied to pod, and whatever there in the pod will be copied to volume. Okay, and then uh, so my uh, elastic search will expect uh, some environment variable. So the name is uh, the environment name uh, variable name is namespace. So I'm just taking it from uh, metadata information. So basically this uh, values cube iphone system so uh, if you want to create an, any other uh, um, this one uh, a namespace so you don't need to uh, change this also it will obviously it will take from metadata dot namespace okay and then the volumes so uh, before uh, my creation of uh, pod this will be created and then uh, i'm referring back into my pod and then the next one is init container so for elastic size to run successfully, so I need to set uh, my systems uh, vm dot max map count is equals to this particular value. So if it is already set by your OS, so you don't need to use this init container. So again, uh, so just for uh, confirmation, or I just wanted to pre uh, set that value because if I don't set it, like uh, my elastic size will gonna fail. So that's the reason I just need to confirm. Uh, so I'll just gonna use init container. And then I'll set that particular value. Init container is basically so this container runs before your application container. So application container in our case is this Elastic Search. Okay. And the next one is I'm just creating a service so to access this uh, deployment outside the so pod uh, uh, service basically uh, outside. So then I'll gonna specify as a node port. So the API version is v1 and the kind is service and the metadata I'm giving and spec part so which is a node port if i want to access any pod outside um, my uh, kubernetes uh, network so then i need to give a node port uh, type is node port and the ports and if you see here node port i've given uh, 31,335. so that means i'll be able to access my uh, elastic elastic search on this particular node port and selector so whatever i've defined in pod uh, should be the same so if it is something different then uh, the service will be created for any other form. Okay. So let's go on to my uh, Kubernetes master and then uh, deploy it. I'll just clear it, clear the screen. So I've already copied those files onto my Kubernetes cluster. I just need to kubectl uh, play iPhone F and I'll give elastic search. Okay. So it will take little time to come up. So until then I'll just uh, pause the video. Yes, uh, now we shall see my uh, Elastic search, uh, stateful application is up and running. So as I've already mentioned you, right? As you can see, uh, so the naming of your pod is like something like zero and one. So if I restart this uh, particular pod, again, it will be zero only. So if I uh, re restart my pod, which has been created by deployment, so then this particular number, whatever the concatenated number will definitely go to change. So, so that is one, I mean, if uh, any cases which request this kind of thing, so then you can go for stateful applications. Okay, so it's basically for to have a sticky uh, identifier. 
So sticky identification, then we will go for stateful applications. So now, so what I can so do uh, if my deployment is successful or not, if I want to just verify it, I will be able to access it v1335 port. Okay. So I mean, this is the JSON that you're gonna get. Uh, so that means your uh, Elasticsearch is working fine. Okay. So the next one is. Uh, so we will uh, deploy Logstash, basically, which is uh, a bridge between uh, our file beat, in our case, file beat and Elasticsearch, which is just a log forwarder. It will take uh, logs from one format and it will just uh, uh, parse it, uh, like it will do some modifications. It gives uh, a formatted output uh, to the destination. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's see. So the YML file for that. So Logstash. So this is also very simple. So, so I'm using a config map uh, because I wanted to change the configuration uh, which is there inside my log stash. Okay, so basically the EP version is V1 and the kind is config map. And the metadata I'm just giving a uh, name as uh, log stash iPhone config, config map. I want to create this uh, under uh, namespace cube iPhone system. So, and these are the files, uh, the configuration files that I need to copy onto my uh, log stash pod. So logstash.yml, I'm giving, uh, giving HTTP host and then the config path, okay? And then a uh, logstash config. So I'm just uh, defining uh, on what port I need to accept the data and what filters I need to do. So, so if I get the input, so what kind of um, field I need to select and uh, how I need to modify it, okay? So as you can see, I'm getting a message and then I'm passing it to JSON and then so I'm taking some uh, client host name also. So I'm doing some manipulations here. And then, so for, so to which destination I need to send the output. If you see Elasticsearch logging, so I've defined them this as a service name in my uh, Elasticsearch, if you remember. So Elasticsearch search logging, right? So that is where I'm referring it here. Okay. Elasticsearch logging and uh, 9200. That is a port I'm using. Okay, that is about the configuration. And then, uh, so there is an official document for Logstash all, for all the five tools. So you can go ahead and you can see all the, these configurations in detail. Okay, I'll put in the, uh, put all these uh, links in description. So if you want to do any modifications or if you want to do any other changes, then you can go ahead and you can do it. And then basically I'm creating a deployment. So, so then the version is apps vbin and then deployment and metadata I'm giving. So I need only one replica. So as I'm using, so it is optional in my case uh, because uh, file beat and metric beat is already sending uh, data which can be accepted completely uh, by Elasticsearch. As it is a demo, just I'm just uh, showing like how we can push our uh, logs to log stash and how we can modify it and again share it with Elasticsearch, okay? And then I'm using a template and the labels and make sure this match labels uh, match with your uh, pod labels. As you can see, it is matching. And the containers are I'm just using official image uh, of Logstash. And then I'm enabling 5044 because I'll be accepting uh, the input inputs there. So that's the reason I'm just enabling it. And so the volumes work uh, works as I've explained in the uh, uh, in a few minutes back, right? So that is how it works. Like first it will be created volumes and whatever the config map I've created, right? So those files will be uh, copied to volumes first and then I'm referencing that those things in my pod. So when I specify this uh, config volume, so this is where I'm specifying it, right? So whatever the files which are there in this volume will be mounted onto this file, uh, folder. Okay, in case if I do any changes, by logging into the container in this particular folder, then that file will also be available in this particular volume. Uh, sorry, something went wrong in my system. So, so then, uh, so what I'll be doing, uh, so I'm just, uh, so creating a service. So the kind of service and the, EPA version is V1, and then uh, I'm creating a uh, cube system. So I don't need to access externally. So I'm just uh, 
So, so give me, I mean, I'm creating a cluster IP. So if you don't uh, specify anything, so type here, so which is basically a cluster IP, okay? So which can be accessed only inside your Kubernetes cluster, okay? The port and target port, I'm specifying it as uh, uh, 5044, okay? So let's go, so I'm specified type also, sorry, I missed this one. So if you don't specify also, by default, it is cluster IP. And then let's go on to Kubernetes master. So let's deploy this one, uh, kubectl, apply ifnf, and then log slash deployment, okay? So it will take a couple of seconds, kubectl get pods. Yes, uh, it is up and running, okay? As you can see, so log slash deployment, so it is up and running, okay? So the next one is uh, file beat, uh, file, uh, it is basically uh, used for uh, monitoring a particular log file or a particular folder inside your uh, uh, missions, so inside your nodes. So that is the reason uh, file beat we will gonna use in this my scenario. So service account. So I have already explained. So I don't uh, I don't take much time to explain these things. So so you can see the cube system, and then I'm specifying. Uh, I'm creating in a cube system, the service account. So I've already mentioned, so many uh, service account can be attached to a, a, a same uh, namespace. So again, I'm just uh, giving the cluster role, the name is filebeat. I'm specifying the res resources, what I want to use and what actions I need to do. So in this, I'm specifying get, watch and list, and then cluster role binding to uh, map these cluster role and service account. And I'm just going quickly because I've already explained what is service account and cluster role and uh, cluster role binding. So this is the names might change and uh, the resources, uh, what I've used in uh, the elastic search and uh, here it might differ, but the the key, I mean, the, the usage is same, okay. So then the next one is uh, uh, config map. So again, this is uh, I've taken from official document. So this I've got actually, so let me go to browser and show it to you. So this is the official document. Uh, so as you can see, I just searched for running a file beat on Kubernetes. So I've got this particular link. So and also they have given um, a Kubernetes uh, deployment file. So it's consists of all the things. So this is the file I uh, just have copied uh, onto uh, my Kubernetes. Uh, this, this is what I'm gonna uh, be creating on my Kubernetes cluster. The one change that I did was, um, so let me show that. Uh, yeah. So here, if you see a uh, filebeat.yml, this is a configuration default configuration file of filebeat. So if you see here, so they have given their um, target as Elasticsearch, but I don't want to uh, do that, right? So I want to use logstash in between. So that's the reason I'm just specifying logstash as my uh, destination. And as you can see, so I'm just giving a uh, five zero double four. So I'm input uh, port I've defined there, right? So for that port I'm uh, sending it, okay? And this is uh, basically uh, the configuration file. So I've just copied from uh, the official document. And I guess uh, in this uh, configuration file, so we will be specifying what folder should be uh, monitored and what log file uh, should be monitored, okay? And the next one is basically file beat will, uh, if, you, if you see the document itself, uh, so let me go here. Uh, so it basically, uh, I mean, uh, monitors this particular uh, folder, liar lib docker containers, because all our container logs will be there under this particular folder. So if we take uh, that particular logs, so, so then definitely we will be having all the logs, correct? So that's the reason. Uh, so this configuration I've taken, and then I'm changing the uh, destination anyhow. And then again, I'm using uh, one more config, so which is basically Kubernetes YML. So as this is uh, used for Kubernetes uh, monitoring, so I'm specifying, uh, I mean, like what uh, container IDs to be uh, taken into account and type I'm specifying. So, so there is a proper documentation. So you can go to modules and you can check all the modules and how to configure a file beat and you can check out all these options. And uh, so uh, this is about uh, the config maps that I'm gonna create. And I'm creating this particular uh, file beat as daemon set because uh, each and every uh, node in my cluster should have daemon set. In my case, I have only one node. If uh, let's say you have 10 nodes, 
So all the 10 nodes should be having this uh, file beat as uh, the pod. So because it should collect the information from a uh, var lib uh, containers folder, right? So every every uh, node should have this particular pod. So that's why I'm deploying it as daemon set. Daemon set will create a, a pod in each node. When you delete a node, so then this pod will also be deleted. When you add a new uh, node for a Kubernetes cluster, this uh, particular pod will be deployed from that automatically. Okay, so this is uh, again similar to deployment. So the labels you need to specify, and this is a pod uh, section. So if you see the pod spec, so I'm using a service account file beat, and then um, termination grace period, I'm giving uh, 30 seconds, okay? And then container uh, name is Firebit, and I'm using again uh, official image. And then I'm giving uh, arguments. So when I uh, create a pod, so on what arguments my uh, pod should be running. So this is, this is the argument I'm just giving. And then basically you need to supply a few environment variables. So in my case, I can uh, just take off actually. I don't know how, uh, why I've kept this because my uh, destination is like uh, Logstash, not the Elasticsearch. So anyway, uh, like uh, these are the environment variables you need to give if you're directly pushing it to Elasticsearch. Okay. And then I'm giving all this configuration, security context and the resources, the CPU uh, limits and requests. And then I'm using uh, volume mounts. Uh, basically I'm creating a volumes and I'm copying or whatever the configurations which have been created by using config maps. And then I'm referencing it uh, inside my pod by using volume modes. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's uh, create this uh, file weight. So kubectl uh, apply hyphen f and then uh, file weight. So it will take a little time. So let me do kubectl get what's so as you can see now, so my file beat should come up. Yeah, as you can see now, so file beat is up and running. Okay. So the next one is, uh, so file beat is for uh, uh, getting the container logs. Uh, it is basically to uh, monitor a particular log file or a particular folder, right? So the next one is uh, metric beat. Uh, again, this is the tool from Elastic, uh, Elastic Cooperation. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this uh, tool is basically used for uh, getting the metrics of your uh, system and getting the uh, metrics of your uh, um, services which are running on your system, okay? So that is the reason we will use metric bit. So again, uh, this uh, for this also I've used uh, official document uh, YML file. So metric bit, as you can see, so metric bit is deployed in two different ways. So basically I need to deploy two instances of uh, metric bit. So one is for one as a daemon set and one as deployment. So one, why as a daemon set? So, so all the system information. So I need to get, so metrics related to my host and uh, uh, system metrics and Docker stats and metric metrics from all the servers, right? So in this case, I should have a pod uh, which will be created on all uh, uh, nodes. So that's the reason I'm creating a, it as a daemon set. And I know I need to create one more as a deployment because I need to retrieve the metrics that are unique to a whole cluster. Okay, so that's the reason I need to create this particular uh, metric bit as a deployment as well as the daemon set. Okay, again, if you go for this URL, so uh, so you'll be having a YML file. So I've directly used that actually because uh, in my case I'm uh, directly sending you to Elasticsearch. So I'm just uh, copy pasted everything whatever uh, it was there here. So just copy pasted here. Uh, so I've taken all the things here. So uh, this is similar to file beat only. So uh, a service account and uh, cluster role binding and cluster role, and the config maps. So so these things and these uh, environment variables, I'm sending it here. Okay. And as you can see, so there is something called as modules in uh, 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 metric beat. Uh, so where, uh, where you can specify what are all the metric stats uh, you need to uh, get. So I, I'm, I want to get a CPU, load, memory, network, all this I wanted to get. So these configurations I'm just creating. And then I'm creating, as you can see, I'm just creating a daemon set. Okay, because I want to have this part in all the nodes that i will gonna have, right? So it will be there in all the uh, things and all the nodes basically. And then I'm 
uh, if you see in uh, pod uh, spec section, I'm using an image, metric bit official image, and then uh, then I'm uh, using this arguments when I start my metric uh, bit container. So I'll be starting with these uh, parameters, and I'm specifying uh, uh, values like uh, environment variables that are needed in my configuration files. By default, a metric bit uh, dot yml is the configuration file. So what are all the things that um, uh, basically where my destination is, uh, from where uh, I need to get uh, the information. All these things will be there in metric bit. And here, if you see system.yml, so in this, uh, I'm specifying what things should be accessed. Okay, now I've used multiple modules. So if you want to see these things also, in, uh, that's what I said, like they have a proper, uh, very nice documentation. You can go to modules and you can just uh, check on the system module and you can, you'll be getting many things there. System modules and you'll be able to see many things there. So they'll give uh, each and everything how you can use and all. So that is what, and then I'm creating a daemon set. And also I'm creating the same thing as uh, a deployment also, okay? Because I need to uh, collect the whole cluster, unique data related to cluster uh, thing, right? So which is basically a cube state metrics, those kind of things I wanted to uh, get, right? So I'm just creating a deployment and daemon set for uh, metric bit. So all these files I've already uh, pushed into GitHub. So I'll just leave a link. So if you want to deploy uh, these things on your Kubernetes cluster, you can go ahead and you can clone that and then you can uh, apply kubectl apply you can do on your Kubernetes systems. Okay, so then let me do a kubectl um, apply iPhone F and then it is uh, metric bait. And then, so yeah, it has been created. kubectl get pods. So as you can see now, uh, metric bead, I guess it has been created. Yeah, so as you can see, one deployment has been created and one daemon set, okay? So daemon set for each node uh, to get the information about uh, system metrics information and uh, deployment. So I'm just uh, uh, want to uh, get my cube uh, metrics. So that's the reason. I'm just deploying a deployment, okay? Uh, so as you can see, so uh, the configuration file for deployment and uh, the configuration for daemon set is uh, different. So that you need to keep in mind, okay? And then now, uh, so we have Logstash. Uh, so basically uh, the bridge between our uh, Beats and uh, Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch to store our data and then metric beat and file beat to forward, uh, take the data from Kubernetes cluster and send it to Elasticsearch or Logstash, right? So the next thing is now we have the data, we need to visualize that. For that reason, so in my case, I'm using a Kibana. So Kibana is one of the visualization tool uh, in ELK stack. So, so for that I'm using, I'm just creating a deployment and then a service to access outside, okay? So I have configured by using ingress. I just wanted to keep uh, uh, it uh, as very simple. So that's the reason I'm just exposing as a service, a node port. So then I'm accessing by using this port. So let me go ahead uh, and walk you through this deployment file. The version is uh, apps uh, slash vwin and the kind is deployment. And then I'm giving a namespace on what it should be deployed. And I'm giving a replica as one. And then the selector, the selector should uh, match with uh, a, a pods uh, labels. So it is, it should be the same always. And then if you see the spec part of the containers, I'm using Kibana official image, and then I'm specifying the resources. This is very simple actually. And the environment variable. So I need to send uh, what is my source. So basically elastic search URL. So I'm giving HTTP elastic search, iPhone logging and uh, Service name, if you remember, I've uh, configured service name, right? So I'm giving that name and the port. And then uh, I'm exposing, I'm expecting, uh, accepting that data on uh, 5600. I'm giving that one. And then I'm uh, to uh, access this uh, particular port outside the world. So I'm just creating a service for that. Basically, this is very simple service. Uh, version apps v1, the kind of service. And then if you see, these are uh, the labels and namespace is queue system. And then the spec, if you see the spec part, so which is basically a node port, 
uh, because I wanted to access outside the world. So that's the reason. And I'm, uh, the node port I've given as uh, 31336 and the selector, it should be similar to your uh, pod labels. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's create uh, this uh, even also. So cube CTR play iPhone F and Kibana. Okay, so when I do this, cube CTR get ports. So I'll be able to see my Kibana uh, pod also, which is up and running. So I want to access this one, right? Cube CTR get all. So then let's see whether the service has been created or not. Yes, uh, the Kibana logging service has been created. Uh, 17 seconds ago to access this one. So I need to take my notes IP. Sorry. Uh, so the node IP is uh, this one. And then, then I need to give the port on which I'll be accessing. So which is basically 31336. Okay. So when I do this one, so you'll be able to see uh, the Kibana homepage. So uh, it will take a couple of seconds to uh, load up. So this is the default um, uh, page you're gonna see. Okay. So then what you need to do is uh, you need to click on index patterns. Okay. So then you need to give uh, index name basically. So in my case, I'm just uh, giving it as log stash iPhone star. So this is basically my index pattern. And then click on next and the select so the time filter field i'm just selecting timestamp and then cl click on create index okay and once this is successfully done so you'll be able to see the fields here okay so once this is done successfully just click on discover uh, so now if everything is successful so then you'll be able to see the logs in a couple of seconds Yes, now I have all the couple of um, like logs which are related to my containers and related to my system. So all those things. So if you want to filter um, based on uh, uh, a pod, so let's say I want to access the logs which are related to this particular um, pod. So let me take it as uh, file bit only, okay? So I want to access uh, the logs of this one. You just go ahead and you in the search field. So you just give, uh, your pod name like this and click on the search oh sorry i've just given a port here so just click like this so it will take a couple of seconds to filter out and then you'll be able to see the data okay so now as you can see so i mean the logs related to file beat or uh, so it's here that's the reason like uh, so this by using this particular uh, elk stack so we will be able to store our logs in one of the centralized system so if that part goes also the logs will be available here okay so so that's what and you can play with this add, add filter and uh, then you can update uh, this filters the time range so you want to see the logs of this particular full day so then you need to click on this one i just wanted to access the last 15 minutes log so that's the reason i've just selected that one Okay, and as you can see, so if you don't delete your logs in your notes, so it'll use a lot of, uh, it'll consume a lot of memory, right? So, so you'll be, there should be somewhere, uh, so some job should be scheduled to delete this particular logs. Uh, so let's say in, in my case, uh, so what I did was, there is one more uh, thing uh, so that I forgot to uh, do it. So, which is basically a curator. So, uh, Elastic uh, Elastic uh, OS uh, providing us uh, this curator, so which basically deletes a logs. Um, uh, so uh, for a particular time period. So so what I did, I'm just creating a cron job. Is basically so which is similar to normal cron job. So it will run this job will run on a particular uh, timestamp. So in my case, uh, so every week, uh, every week once, so I'm running this cron job. So what I'm doing, uh, so I'm just uh, running this particular command. Okay, so pip install and then Elasticsearch Curator. I'm just deleting by using this command. So I'm deleting my logs because logs. Uh, I mean, uh, if you store, keep on storing your logs, it will it is like it will take a lot of memory in your system. So it is 
re always recommended. So if you want to uh, have only uh, the logs for last week or the last month store only that, so you can delete the older logs. Okay, this is how you can delete. So it is just if I go to a Kubernetes uh, master, I can just create this one also. Cube CTL apply nf and then curator. So this will be uh, I mean create uh, deleting my logs uh, every uh, once in a week. Okay. So this is about HLK stack. Uh, so if you have liked the video, please share and subscribe. Uh, thank you. Have a good day.